Hey, so this is Joseph, and this is the fourth part of the second chapter of Stuart's Calculus. And uh, we're going to be talking about the chain rule and implicit differentiation in this video. So, the chain rule, we, we use it because um, what if we need to take the derivative of a function that's being operated on by another function, and these functions look, could look like... So these are two functions that we need to use the chain rule to solve, because we can't take the derivative of either of these functions um, as is. I don't know how to deal with the square root sign, I don't know how to deal with the function being operated on by this uh, sine function right there. However, what if we called to find another function u of x and called that x squared plus 1. So we have this function. Well, using um, g, we could, ha we could say, well, g of y with respect to u would be equal to sine u. And then we could find g prime with respect to u, and we know that that is cosine u. And so we can deal with this this way. And we can, and so we can find the derivative with respect to u. But what we really want to find is the derivative with respect to x, and that's where the chain rule comes in. So here I'm going to write out um, broadly what the chain rule says. So say we have a, a function y, and we want to find the derivative. Of, we have a, a function y that is in terms of x, and we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, and it's a function where you like the previous ones, where there's a function of x being operated on by something else. Well, this equals, can equal dy with respect to some other function u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And this works because, like fractions, these du's can cancel out, and uh, you get dy dx equals dy dx. And um, but you have this intermediary uh, variable function that you, well you treated it as a variable but it's actually a function with respect to x. So let's go back to that previous function and we can see practic practically how this works. So we defined f of x is sine x squared plus one. We can't take the derivative of that straight away, so we define another function. U of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Now, um, and now we have f of u is equal to sine u. All right, so what we need to find, what we're trying to find is df dx. And based on the chain rule, that will be equal to df du. So the derivative of f with respect to u, so the derivative of this function, times du with respect to x. And what we're trying to find is this, remember. So that means we will find df du right here, which is equal to cosine u, and we can sub, sub the u back in, so it's equal to cosine x squared plus 1. And we can find du dx right here. If we take this derivative with respect to x, we got du dx equals 2x, and then the 1 is a constant. And so we can multiply both of these together, and we get 2x cosine x squared plus 1, and that is the derivative using the chain rule. Now, that's as explicitly going through the chain rule, but practically you're going to have to take a lot of derivatives like this while you're doing different problems, and there's a really, there's a quicker way of thinking about this. So let's go back to the original function f. f of x equals sine of x squared plus 1. When I look at this, I'm not going to be, even though I know conceptually how the chain rule works, what I'm going to be thinking when I take do this is, all right, I need to take the derivative of this whole function right here. And then I need to take the derivative of whatever is inside and multiply it, and multiply the two. So what I would do is, looking for f prime with respect to x, I would do 
the derivative of the whole thing, the sine function, including and then keep the same argument. So that'd be cosine x squared plus one, and then take the derivative of what's inside and make it a coefficient. So that would be two x. So then we multiply it by two x, and we get the same thing. And it's that's just a way quicker way of thinking about it. And basically, all the time, you can use that thought process, with the exception of very few much more complicated functions but most of the time you can think of a uh, think of the chain practically you can think of the chain rule in this way all right so that was the chain rule and now that we we've kind of covered that we can talk about implicit differentiation which we and we're going to need the chain rule to do this um an implicit differentiation we use it for when we're trying to take the derivative um of one variable with respect to the other for functions where there's only an implied relationship between x and y and that means these are functions where you can't um without using nasty uh radicals or nasty piecewise functions you couldn't express uh, this function, for example, with one y isolated all in terms of x. So an exam a, a simple example of this is uh, the unit circle. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, th we can express this at just y in terms of x, and it would need to be a piecewise function. But um, and even though we can do it, it's not too nice, and it's kind of annoying to take the derivative that way and so we're going to need to implicitly differentiate this and so I'm going to be out let's let's go through it so you can use the derivative operator in some cases kind of like you do in algebra you apply it to both sides so we can take a uh, and here what we're trying to do when we say take the derivative is take the derivative of y with respect to x so we're differentiating always with respect to x. And you could do it with respect to y. If you wanted to take the derivative of x with respect to y, you can totally do that. Um, but that's not what we're going to be doing for this problem. And so we've got this. And since there's a plus there, we can distribute this out. And remember, the derivative of a constant is zero. And so we have the derivative of this function x squared with respect to x and the, the derivative of this function with respect to x. And so this first term right here, that's pretty easy. We know what that is. That's 2x. But this is a little trickier. We don't have any x's in here. We have y's. How do we do deal with this? Well, we can use the chain rule. So let's call that y g of y. Now, using the chain rule, we can say dg dx, which is ultimately what we're trying to solve there, is equal to d, um, dg dy times oh, dy dx. And so what we can do, and remember we're trying to solve for this dy dx over there. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute in this expression, which is equal to this, and that right there is equal to this expression. Because of that, we're going to be able to sub in this for that term right there. So we're going to say 2x plus dg dy times dy dx, and that's equal 0. And remember, we're trying to find dy dx. Now, this dg dy, that's pretty easy. We just take the derivative of y squared with respect to y, and that's just 2y. So we've got 2x plus 2y times dy dx. That's equal to 0. And so all we have to do is we subtract 2x over here and divide it by 2y, and that will get us dy dx is equal to negative x over y. And that is how we do implicit differentiation.